Hello and welcome to this week's edition of WCS Sports Connection Game Day. I'm your co-host Jeremy Qualls and with me as always my co-host Tate Matthews. Happy New Year from the Game Day crew. Let's start, uh, let's wrap up the football season. It seems like we say that every, every week, every episode, but uh, the last football was played over the break in the U.S. Army All-American football game with uh, uh, one of our own participating, Van Jefferson, of course, from Ravenwood. We also had some other guys around the mid-state area playing in this game. We had uh, uh, Rico McGraw from Innsworth. He's an Alabama commit. And Kyle Phillips from Hillsboro, who's a UT commit. So let's talk a little bit about this game. The East-West game, as it's dubbed every year. Uh, the West beat the East 39-36. to I think the East came back at the end to, to make it somewhat of a ball game. Van Jefferson had one carry for two yards, which is interesting. If we'd have relied on that all year, we wouldn't have been in the in the position that we were with Ravenwood. But anyway, uh, I think their uh, their roster was full. Yes, it was, and and what a uh, first of all, what an unbelievable honor it was for him to be there. I mean, this this really is just the top players in all of the country. Um, you know all 50 states and I mean there were some big time guys there and, and they it's a great experience for all of them so congratulations to Van from here for making we also had uh, Josh Smith from Oakland High School the Oakland Patriots he linebacker committed to Vanderbilt he was out there so there's only 50 states I don't know how many players were on each roster but we had four from the mid-state one from Williamson County that's uh, that and that's two in a row for Ravenwood they had the Hork no he went to the Under Armour uh, All-American game last year, the Horky kid. This two year, two years in a row for Ravenwood that we've had a kid in one of these two big-time games. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm guessing there's not enough touches and carries to spread around that game. Van got one. That was probably more than some. But uh, just to be out there, what an unbelievable honor. I think the whole weekend is, is, is pretty neat to have the way they have it set up. Uh, the guys get there. Of course, they have their swag bags ready for them. I mean, Adidas gear. Galore. Galore. Of course, Adidas is the main sponsor, as it is for the WCS Sports Conference. And, and they get that gear, they go out, and I think they go through a combine situation where they, they get their, their 40 uh, speed time down, they get the vertical down, and of course the coaches are salivating, you know, uh, are these kids wavering at all on their commitments? You know, those coaches are in there, and now they're in their room with some of those guys. You know, if, if I'm a UT commit and, and Van's going to, to Georgia, you know there's some, there's some rising going on and talking about that uh, SEC uh, uh, foe between each other or even recruiting amongst themselves. Oh, yeah, and Van's roommate was actually Kyle Phillips, who committed on the day of the game. Uh, to the University of Tennessee, the, the, the four-star out of Hillsboro. Everybody in the country wanted him. They were roommates. So I know Kyle was trying to talk Van into, you know, uh, getting out of that Georgia commit and going to UT. Van's trying to talk him and going to Georgia. There's a ton of that that goes on. And, um, you know, so it, it is. There, there's a lot. And there's some people out there that uh, will come away. You watch. There'll be some flipping going on in that thing. Just because, they're, remember, a commitment, that's all it is. It, none of it is worth anything until they sign that fax or however they do that now. And, and it's interesting to note, too, the timing of this game goes in conjunction with the bowl games. So you know they're all watching. They're all rising each other and talking about it. And then, and then you've got uh, Tennessee comes away with a big win there. And, uh, you know, that has to play an effect to, to Butch Jones and his crew who have camped out, so to say, here in WCS trying to get the commitment from Van and failed to do so. And then Mike Bobo's departure at the University of Georgia going to Colorado State. I just wonder if this will weigh in any of the decision making between now. I know that Ole Miss has come in late. Uh, he's best friends with the kid, uh, the name escapes me, down at uh, Memphis University School that has made a commitment to Ole Miss. Drew Richmond. Uh, Drew Richmond. And you know that they, they, they text, they tweet, they Facebook all the time each other. Hey, we go here, we'll do this. And they're watching it. So it's just uh, it's, it's an up and down. I know it's a stressful battle for those college coaches this time of the year. It is. And, 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 and the, a lot of different things go into it. I, I really firmly believe Kyle Phillips was headed to LSU until John Chavis left to become the defense corner at Texas A&M. So – a lot of things can happen, especially in the month of January. So uh, there's some dominoes that can fall. Who knows? They might not end. He, he might end up going to Ohio State. I will say this. Uh, you were talking about when they get in there and they do the combine. They do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work. The O-line and the D-line go down together. The, the secondary and the wide receivers go against each other. I do know that in those uh, pass pro, skeleton, whatever you want to call it, the one-on-ones that Van was in with the wide receivers and the DBs, we talked about it all year long, but, I mean, these are some big-time people talking about it. They were so impressed with his route running, his attention to detail. Uh, very polished receiver. So he, he, made a, um, he made a very good showing. 
Also, when you get elected to this game, you get to bring one coach. So Coach Hester got to go out there with him. Uh, Kyle Phillips' coach got to go. So what a neat deal. There was a dinner the night before the game. The guest speakers were Marcus Allen and Rod Woodson. I mean, they spared no expense. It's just a, a really neat deal. If you ever have a chance to go to one, it's, um, it'd be worth your time. Well, congratulations once again to Van Jefferson. This completely ends our discussion on football for the year. It's kind of Still sad. Still signing day. It's kind of sad. Well, it's true. It's kind of sad <laughs> to a point because I'm a basketball guy, but I've enjoyed thoroughly with you and with the crew here of, of doing our football coverage. But now it's time for basketball. So let's move on into the basketball realm. WCS Sports Conference right now is, is in full bore action right now. We just got off the Christmas break. Uh, all these teams playing in Christmas tournaments, not necessarily deep or in the meat of their their conference schedule yet, but a lot of games have been played against top-notch quality, and we're going to talk about that today. Let's talk. Let's start with our, our girls' side of the action in our Division II group. Uh, Fairview right now sitting at three and nine, two and five in the district. Uh, they they uh, had you know they've they've played well. Uh, over the break, they didn't necessarily uh, have a game. They actually took the break off, and you know as a coach, you have one or two ways. And I talked to Coach Ladd at Summit about this. Summit had also did not uh, take a break. Uh, they had won two out of four last games, Fairview that is, going into break. Going into a, a Christmas tournament can really affect your team play. Now, if you are sitting undefeated or one or two losses, you can carry that momentum into the break and continue to go. It kind of, you kind of have to justify by where, you're, where, you're, where your group is. Are they the kind of kids that have that killer mentality that they want to win and play all the time? Or are they kind of wavering right now? We've lost a few. You know, those things are really hard to do. But you have to go ahead and schedule these things prior to the season starting. So sometimes it really plays in your favor, and sometimes it can really break you down mentally if you go into a Christmas tournament and lose a couple games. Yeah, and then you also, who knows, are you injured? Are you healthy? If you're injured, it gives you time to heal up. Uh, we know Independence, the boys' basketball team, they were playing great basketball. They, they just got, they got hit with the flu. They got hit with injuries. So you never know. But you're right. It, it's, um, it obviously worked for Summit, boys' basketball. Um, it you know, didn't, maybe didn't help as much for Independence. But it just depends on the team. There's a lot that goes into it. But, you know, and I also think it depends on what, kind, what, what's your, what are your families like. Are they ones that travel during the – you know, some of them don't want to have to fight with – some are on vacation now, some are on vacation the next week. So uh, really there's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You just got to figure out what's best for your program and, and go from there. Oh, in certain situations, it can be a bonding experience. I know uh, one time at Lexington that we had uh, a lot of broken families or, or, or one parent family. So we got together as a family and tried to give them that Christmas dinner, that Christmas camaraderie that they may not have. And that, that seemed to help on the court. And, and sometimes that does help the situation, but when you go in and play and the kids really don't want to be there and you play bad, that can spill over into the year as you come back. So it's, it's kind of a gamble, to be honest with you. But uh, Fairview didn't play, and they're sitting at 3-9 and nine right now uh, and 2-5 and five in their district currently. Camden's 5-0, and oh, kind of rolling right now in first place. Creekwood 4-0 oh, uh, in second place. Hickman County 2-2, two and two. Waverly 2-2, two and two. East Hickman 2-3. Fairview sitting at two and three, Lewis at uh, seventh place at two and three, Stewart County at two and three, and Montgomery Central. That's a large group. Uh, a lot of a lot of basketball to be played to see where the the uh, Lady Jackets will play out in that. Uh, moving on, Page Page boys are sitting at three. Uh, excuse me, Page girls are sitting at three and ten right now. Uh, it's interesting. Page has not played a conference game yet, and that could be a good thing. Get all the kinks worked out, the rust knocked off, if you will. And Coach Billy Mooney right now sitting at zero uh, and zero in the district play. Uh, they are kind of spreading the wealth right now. They have some girls averaging five, six points a game, uh, uh, sitting right now at three and ten. What do we know about Page girls? What you said, they, they've got four girls averaging five plus, so it's balanced. Uh, you would like for it to be a little bit higher than that, but if, if they can do that, you know they're at least going to score 20 points uh, or, or 25 points a game, closer to 30. So uh, they played some really good teams. That's the – that's the misleading thing about the three and ten. They played some really good teams. They beat a very athletic Stratford team, 37-27, um, their last game. So, uh, you know, they're young. They 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 were building towards that team two years ago, where they won 25 games, 26 games, and they were very seen. They they were all seniors, so they knew these next two years were going to be a rebuilding. Uh, this is kind of where they are. They're a young team, but they're getting better and uh, going into district play. Uh, they're battle tested, so. 
I think they got you know probably won't finish top of the pack, but they got a chance to, to finish in the top half. Well, it's like you said, they won the they won the game going into Christmas break, beat Stratford, uh, good win. Athletic team as always. We talked about Metro basketball. May not be the best basketball, but they're going to be athletic. Athletic. Run. And then they go into the community and Eagleville Christmas tournaments and lose four in a row. Now it'll be interesting to see how they they bounce back this week. See how they uh, they play. Uh, and get off that four-game losing streak and get back on the winning column. Uh, that is Page High School sitting at 3-10. and 10. The Lady Patriots sitting at 3-10, and 0-0 oh oh in the district. Uh, moving on into our Division One, Brentwood. Lady Bruins, as we knew going in, probably district favorite or favorites to get at least combat with Dixon uh, going in for the district championship, sitting right now at 14-2, 4-0 in district play. They go into the Beach Holiday Classic Tournament uh, at Beach. High school, they go, uh, they go two and two. Well, the semifinal loss to East Nashville by four, 30 to 34, and then they played uh, 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 Dixon as they came back off a break and got beat 33 to 50. We knew that they would be the ones to rival them. I just didn't think it would be that big of a spread. Obviously, Dixon girls are going to be something to be uh, uh, ha- to, hard to handle as we come down the stretch. And it's been like this the last two seasons. They, you knew it's going to be Brentwood and Dixon. Um, uh, they're good, and they have a Lily Carter, the junior at Dixon County, committed to Vanderbilt. I mean, she had offers from everywhere. So I really think that's kind of the difference. They both have <clears throat> uh, five quality players that are going to start on the starting lineups. They both have a good bench, but Lily Carter is a flat-out superstar. Uh, they had a hard time containing her. It, yeah, it's going to be Dixon and, and Brentwood. That game, I, I thought it would be a little bit closer than that. Jenny Roy in double figures, the leading scorer for the, for the Brentwood Bruins and the Belmont commit. She's going to have to um, – she's going to have to score a lot of points in those games if they're going to find a way to beat Dixon. Absolutely. She's going to have to carry them. And that was a correction. I said 4-0. Uh, they're 3-1, and obviously, after the Dixon loss. Got third Mo- place. Moving on, uh, Centennial. Lady Cougars right now are sitting at 5-6. Uh, and six. Uh, right now, 0-4 in the district. They beat Mount Pleasant going into the break, 41-30. to In the last game, they did not play over the break. Uh, be interesting. They're, you know, they're, they come back Friday night and play at Independence for that uh, chance to get back in the winning column in the district play. What do we know about Centennial? A lot to play for for Centennial. Like you said, they're 5-6. and six. Independence is a game that they can win. It's a game that Independence can win, too. It's a district win. There hasn't been a whole lot of those in, in, in Lady Cougar uh, basketball history. So what they're playing for now, this might be the most wins they've ever had in a season, and that's what they're doing. They want, they want to not finish at the bottom of the district. This, is a, this can get them back to 500. I think Tony Hill's done a great job. He's come in there, and uh, he's, he said from the beginning, i got to build a culture. And that's really what he's had to do. So, uh, big game for them. This gets them to 500, district game. I think they'll go in there and play well. And it's a game they can win. Coach Goodwin at Franklin sitting right now at 6-9, and 1-2 and two in the district. Uh, they have won three of their last four. Uh, I feel like Franklin and the Lady Rebels are kind of turning the corner there. I know that she lost a couple of early ones very close. Uh, feel like they were winnable games. She's sitting at young. Her best player right now is probably a freshman, uh, arguably. Uh, they went to the Overton Christmas Tournament. Uh, went two and one with uh, wins over Marshall County and uh, Harpeth Hall, and then the loss came to Overton, 42-46. So they're playing really good basketball right now, coming into the meat of the schedule. They are, and and remember, two of her losses are to Riverdale, who's got yes. one loss to a, a team out of Miami, Florida, in the in the in the uh, Myrtle Beach Classic. So. They are. They, they're playing really good basketball, 6-9. and nine. Uh, The loss to Overton in the Overton, they're very good on the girls' side of the ball at Overton. So they're playing great ball uh, going into the district, the meat of the district schedule now. Um, you know, I think you got Brentwood and Dixon, and then right under that you got two or three teams, and Franklin might be that uh, third team. Uh, moving on, Independence sitting right now, like you said earlier, they're struggling a little bit. They're 2-15, they're and 0-3 uh, and uh, in district play. Played at the Lawrence County Christmas Tournament as well as the Overton Christmas Tournament. Went 1-5, beating Hume Fogg 45-42, uh, but losing the other four contests over the break. They come back, and they're going to be playing Centennial, like you said earlier. I think it should be a well a, a, a hard-fought contest. Uh, you know, Indy's just trying to get back in that win column, and I know as competitive as, as the coach he is that they're they're looking to do so. Yeah, and and – that was a good win over Hume Fogg in that tournament. Mary Beth White does a great job. You know, she's been at the state tournament two, three times at Antioch. Lost a heartbreaker Friday night to, to Summit, 43-42. to 42. 
that was a game they could have won. So they're, they're in these games. That's how close Summit and Indy and I, I think Franklin are going to be centennial. Uh, but th- they're playing hard. It's just, you know, from being a basketball coach, uh, when you have to manufacture points, which that's what she's having to do, it's so hard. Because we have good coaches. E- every program in this county, has good, in this district, has a good coach. So you know they're going to have a defensive game plan. You know they're going to be able to play good defense. And when you have to manufacture the points, it's tough. That's what she's having to do. But they're competing. And there's nothing worse than having to play low and slow. Yeah. Nothing worse. I mean, you know, you, you have that battle where your kids buy into the, the fact first one to 40 is going to win, regardless. We always had that saying, first one to 40 is going to win. And some nights we try to keep it under 40. And it's just because of the fact you just don't have those kids that can score a lot of points. And it's really difficult in there. And I figure that's probably the way right now when you have to manufacture points. You know, uh, football is different than basketball. It's not easy to hide anybody on the basketball court. Right. Everybody wrote, serves their role. So, uh, Ravenwood, Mariska Harris right now sitting at 11-3, 3 on the district. They played in the Murfreesboro Central Magnet Classic and going 2-0, and beating Coffee County and Warren County. They have won five straight behind Downey, averaging 15.3 points per game. Yeah, Kara Downey's playing great. She's, she's averaging uh, double figures, and, and, and she's doing it consistently. You know, she wouldn't be having that average if it was just – a game here, a game there. She does it every night. I think this is really the feel-good story of of the district on the ladies' side so far. A lot of good ones, but, I mean, uh, this program hadn't had a whole lot of wins the past few years. Mariska's come in, done a great job. We shouldn't be surprised, uh, you know, uh, the, you, you look at where she's been the past few years with Coach Enzel and the Lady Rebels, I mean, Lady Raiders at MTSU. Right. Uh, she's been a part of something really, really special. She's come in there, brought a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm to the Lady Raptors program, and they're play, playing really well. Well, it'd be interesting to see how this plays out between them and Brentwood. And they play Friday night, the Battle of the Woods, round one is taking place Friday night. And uh, it'd be very interesting to see how that game comes out for that battle of second place right now between Ravenwood and Brentwood. Uh, last but not least, Old Sparty, the Lady Spartans, Summit sitting at 6-10. and 10. Let me tell you right now, I've caught all the, all the action. I, I caught uh, several games over the break. I got to see Summit play, and I was very impressed with Josh Goodwin's job that he's doing with, with these girls right now. They're not the most skilled team, but they play very hard, and, and they're looking to win. And when you put those two things together, you're going to have some success. And they came off that win, like you said, against Indy 43-42. Uh, they're sitting at 6-10 uh, and 10 right now, which I would have thought probably would be well over what they probably assumed they were going to win this year already, and 1-2 and two in the district. Uh, what do we know about them? You're right. Two out of three wins, uh, that's great for them. They haven't had that before. And the loss was to CPA, who two years ago was a state champion. So they're a very quality program. And, and the Independence win that we spoke about earlier, that was a great win. They're young, okay? He, he's only in his second year. It's, a four, it's only the fourth year of the school. But they – they could have lost that game, and they didn't. They hung out, and they found a way to win to get their second win out of three games. I think he's got to be very happy about that. They got a chance to win ten games this year, and I think that would be an be unbelievable huge. accomplishment Absolutely. for them. All right, right now, the, the girls' district roundup right now, as it sits, is Dixon in first. Uh, obviously, we've talked about them. Ravenwood and Brentwood sitting in that second place uh, spot. Summit sitting at fourth. Franklin in fifth, Centennial in sixth, and Indian in seventh. So it's going to be interesting as we get down to the sports conference. That's the girls' basketball roundup. When we come back from break, we're going to hit the boys real quick, and then we're going to have our pick'em section. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to WCS Sports Connection Game Day. I'm your co-host, Jimmy Qualls, and with me, as always, is Tate Matthews. Let's go through the boys real quick, uh, talk about the uh, Division II guys right now. Fairview sitting right now at 1-11, 0-5. have lost eight in a row. Tough stretch for Coach King. I mean, we've got Waverly coming up. We've got Creekwood coming up. I mean, and those two teams right now are playing lights out. Waverly won the uh, uh, they're above their Christmas tournament above the Rim Club. Creekwood right now is averaging 85 points a game. Scored over 94 times. And, and beat Waverly 99-75. Yeah, it's just, not, it's just not looking good right now for Waverly. I mean, uh, uh, Fairview. I do see some wins there coming up. They have Santa Fe on the 16th and, and some other wins down the road. They play Summit there and there, too, and I don't see them 
meeting summit. But uh, you know, it's tough when you get in this this particular situation that you have to get the boys to to buy into what you're trying to do and get ready for the district tournament. So uh, Fairview sitting right now at 111. Let's move on. Uh, Page sitting at seven and nine. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give a lot of credit to Coach Ringstaff and what they're doing right now because I, I saw those guys play early in the year, and uh, they're actually overachieving from the team that I saw. They're sitting at 7-9, a chance probably in the next couple of games to get back to 500, uh, doing a good job. They went to the community Christmas tournament, uh, and Eagleville, Eagleville Christmas tournaments went going 2-2, two and two, wins over community and Eagleville, and the next game is against Marshall County. What do we know about those guys real quick? You're right. They're, they're, they're going to be about a 500 club. They play in the toughest district in, in AA. Uh, that's all there is. On the boys' side, Absolutely. that's all there is to it. So uh, he's getting better. They're competing. What they need to try to do is finish in that. If they can get that, they need to try to get that number four spot from Cascade is what they need to do going into the tournament. And, you know, once you get into the tournament, you never know. Uh, all you got to do is beat them once. But uh, they're playing good. They're getting better. That's the most important thing. Well, there, there are six teams in that district, and all five of the other teams are playing for uh, second through six because CPA obviously uh, going to run away with that and probably the state championship. Uh, moving on to our district, uh, uh, excuse me, our, our uh, Division One guys. Brent Wood right now playing good basketball, 16-3. and three. Two losses have come to Blackman. They match up at the uh, Father Ryan Christmas Tournament in the finals against Blackman. Fall to them in the finals, 67-44. Uh, to 44. Uh, Beat a very good Cane Ridge team by 12. This Blackman stigma right now, we just can't get over it. I mean, we've, Indy has played Blackman. Franklin has played Blackman. And Brentwood has played them twice. We've got, we're have got we 0-4 against Blackman right now. And, uh, you know, if we keep hitting on that door, keep knocking on the door, eventually we'll have to break the door down. This I love this Blackman Brentwood rivalry that that has started on the boys' side. Remember two years ago, Brentwood beat him in the state tournament. Asa Duvall hits that three pointer out of the left corner with two seconds, three seconds left. That was unbelievable. Brentwood comes, uh, Blackman comes back, returns the favor last year. So Brentwood's playing really good ball. Uh, Grant Teichman, there's a lot of good players on this team. Uh, it was Grant Teichman's turn to kind of step up and be the leader of this team, and he's done it, man. He is playing lights out basketball. He is a great basketball player. I've talked to several college coaches about him. I know he's getting some looks, even to have an offer on the table, several offers on the table. Uh, I've seen uh, Lipscomb in the house. I've seen uh, uh, Freed Hardman and Martin Methus all have been lurking. I'm sure the, the offers will come. He's a great basketball player, heads-up player, high IQ, a little swag to him. I love yeah. the swag, got to have the swag can stroke it, uh, great passer, and will flat get after you on defense. I mean, he's a well-rounded player. Got good size, about 6'2", 6'3", so I look for some great things against him. I would love to see the Blackman, Brentwood, one more time. It's tough to beat somebody. Now, Barry Waltman right now is one of the best coaches in the state, hands down. Uh, Blackman is not a fantastic team. This is not a Blackman team of the past. They flat get after it. They're athletic, they're quick, and they can shoot the ball. And we could talk all day about them. But Brentwood right now, 16-3. and three. Uh, upcoming for them is uh, at Ravenwood Battle of the Woods. That'll be an interesting matchup for those guys. Centennial five and eight, one and three in the district right now. They went two and two in the Russellville, Kentucky Christmas tournament. Uh, loss came to in-state opponent Kenwood out of Clarksville, forty-seven to sixty-three. Uh, excuse me, forty-nine to sixty-eight, and they play Indy Friday night. This is an interesting matchup. Indy not exactly one hundred percent, not exactly playing one hundred percent. And Centennial trying to get over that hump in the meat of the schedule and try to get in those uh, middle, second, third, fourth place uh, spot in the district. That's right. Uh, and Centennial is one of those. This is Coach Terrence Johnson's first year. This Independence game, this is one they need to win. Uh, this this will be a good test of uh, how much better have we gotten. Remember, Centennial and Franklin are a lot alike. They got football guys. Well, you know from from doing it yourself, uh, those guys don't get in basketball shape until really February, but it really starts in January. So this will be a good test to see how far they've come now that they got their football guys back. But they are definitely more athletic and playing better than they have been in the past. Franklin right now sitting at 500, 7-7, seven and 2-1. Seven, and one. I still think Franklin, and I've happened to see them more than anybody just because of the way the schedule has fallen for me over Christmas. Uh, they're 7-7, seven 2-1 seven, and one in the district. They're the kind of the sleeping giants to me. They're the biggest team. They don't have the best guard play. That hurts them. But right now, Garrison Matthews, a Lipscomb signee, right now is having to play one through five for them. Uh, I think they feel better when he's running the one, but it takes him off some of the scoring options when he comes off the screens. He has some swag about him. He handles himself well. He handles the ball well. But 
we need they, they probably need him in other positions. Joe Crislow right now is like the Dennis Rodman of the WCS <laughs> Sports Conference. He can give you a double double night, trash points. You don't even know how many he's playing. You look up and he's got eighteen yeah. and with with fourteen boards. Uh, he's you know playing pretty good right now. Uh, the uh, Booth Page right now build him out over the Christmas tournament. Plays well, left handed can stroke it, strong physical. They have a good team. I really think before the year's over they're going to mesh and be a tough uh, tough to contend with. They played at the Columbia and Overton Christmas tournaments. Uh, played Blackman, lost 47-63. That score was not as bad as it seems. It was close pretty well all the way through. Uh, and that's Franklin. Indy right now, 10-10, sitting at 500. They played a full slate of Christmas games. Obviously, yeah. they played seven games. Uh, you know, they played in Mississippi. They played in Overton. They played in Columbia. Went 2-5. and five, Lost to Blackman by nine. Beat a good show of the team. I've seen Indy play three times as well in break. Indy is a good basketball team. If they stay 100%, their only weakness right now, and I'm sure Coach Glass will tell you, is they're not very deep. And obviously that shows. We had somebody out with a sickness. We had a little injury going on. And all of a sudden we have to go. The Murphy boys right now can finish with anybody. you got a sophomore. you got a senior. The sophomore can flat play. Uh, their post kid right now is playing well. They can run the floor. They can shoot the ball well when they're 100%. That's right. And when they're all on uh – when they're all clicking at the same time, they can score a lot of points. So that's uh, – the Independence is one of those teams. That when they play well, they can beat anybody in this conference. Ravenwood, 500 as well, 8-8, eight 2-1. Eight, I think they're the sleeping uh, – excuse me, the dark horse of the group. We don't know a whole lot about those guys. They're kind of quiet. They go about their work. They work hard. They're sitting at 8-8. Eight and eight. They played at the Coffee County Christmas Tournament and Pigeon Forge. Seymour uh, uh, Classic, they went 1-3. Uh, but they did have a big win over Summit. Before the break, they play Brentwood, Battle of the Woods Friday night. And that brings us to old Sparty. Right now, the feel-good story of the year for me. No question. S Summit right now sitting at 12-4. and four. They didn't go to break. That was a great move, Coach Ladd, by not going in and chancing anything. They're 12-4, and 2-1. and one. They won the last three, including a huge win over Indy going into break. They play Frank on Friday. I have to tell you what, John Carter and his brother right now are tough to handle. Well, if Joe Crislow is the Dennis Rodman of WC Sports Conference, John Carter is Tim Duncan. That dude's a double-double a night, man. 18 boards, 18 points against Summit. I mean, against Independence the other night. That, what a great performance that was. Absolutely. And, you know and just what? a sophomore. And you watch him, and he's so unassuming. You don't know. He looks like he may be playing lazy, but boom, he's by you, and he scores, and he's getting in there. He's big enough to handle things. I, I tell you what, J.C.'s tough to handle. be interesting to see how this all plays out. It's fixing to play out right before our eyes coming up. So that brings us to our pick em, folks. Our pick em. Games of the week right now. First game is Fairview versus Waverly. We'll start on the girls' side. We have to go quick, Tate. Girls' side, Fairview versus Waverly. Fairview. You're going to go Fairview. I'm going to agree with you. Uh, boys' side on that. Waverly. Unfortunately, I hate to pick against any team, but the Tigers right now, Waverly playing too tough. Page at Marshall County. Girls. Old moon dog, the Lady Patriots. I've seen Marshall County girls play. Absolutely. He's going to outcoach that group right there and win that game. Boys, Paige Marshall. I'm going to give him the upset, and it will be an upset, but I think Paige gets them. Not going to count it necessarily upset. I think the Paige team is scrappy. I think the Marshall County team may come in a little bit sleepy. Uh, I'm going to give you the – I'm going to go with you on that. Patriots with a win there. Brentwood, Ravenwood, Battle of the Woods, girls' side. It's going to be fun. Uh, Brentwood gets them. Good gonna, game, though. I'm going to go with Mariska Harris. We're at, we're at the nest. Be interesting. They're playing good basketball. Brentwood's probably second test of the year with quality. I'm going to go Ravenwood against you right there. Like what about it. the boys' side? I'm going with D. King and the Bruins, uh, but, but Coach Whitlock always has a great game plan against them. Brentwood. I'm going to go with you absolutely. Just like we said, G2 bar on this until somebody breaches Brentwood, they're the top dog there right now. Go. Centennial versus Indy real quick, girls' side. Centennial. Centennial. I'm going to go with uh, Centennial as well. Boy side. Indy. I'm going with Indy. Franklin versus Old Sparty. Girls. The battle of the good ones. I'm going with Kerry Goodwin, the Lady Rebels. I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go with Josh Goodwin because they're playing good <laughs> basketball coming in. And on the boys' side, I'm picking Old Sparty for the upset of the big dogs of Franklin right now. Old what do you have? Old Sparty. Old Sparty. Thank you for joining us for WCS Game Day. Come back to us. See us next time. Always remember to be nice.